was inspecting the boat before I purchased it, I did open up the engine compartment before and noticed although it's not corroded, it's not rusty, it was pretty greasy. I did also have to change the battery. It got quite a bit of grease on my hands and on my shoes and although I don't expect the engine compartment to be kitchen countertop clean, I do expect to work down there without getting greasy. The next thing on my to-do list is cleaning the engine compartment and that includes the motor. This isn't a product endorsement video, no one's sponsoring it. I happen to prefer gunk degreaser. It's just what I grew up using. Some people might say use Simple Green or any other handful of products you'd find at your local automotive store. Let's get to work and see how this goes. First part of the job is to gain access to the engine compartment. We do need a good cleaning. So the first step is going to be to spray this gunk engine degreaser on the engine and the rest of the parts in the engine compartment. raining so I'm going to put the front canvas pieces on and keep working. What often happens at times like this is I start reflecting and finding little side jobs that distract me and there is something about this job that's been bothering me and that's the draining of the water has been very slow on the starboard side in the back of the boat so I'm going to try to figure out what's going on. Yep right in here I can feel something and I can't quite get it out can't quite get a hold of it with the needle nose well the old nail trick and needle nose trick doesn't appear to be working next step is to get a screwdriver and Take the hose off the other side, the hose clamp, and try to get it out that way. And as long as I'm doing this, I'm going to do a better job cleaning this part of the engine compartment. <laughs> Looks like a nut. Well, that's gone. All that's left is giving this drain a test. Well, the next thing I'm going to check is something called the float switch. The float switch attaches to the belge pump, so if you are taking on water, it'll automatically turn the pump on to try to keep you from sinking, so it's pretty important. By the way, this is my third Sea Ray. And the first two, as I bought them and did this initial shakedown, both of them were not working. Let's see how this one does. <laughs> well, that's three for three, C-Ray. Three times when I bought the used C-Ray boat, the float switch wasn't working. I must be the only one in North America that actually checks the float switch. Well, I've followed the wires from the float switch around the bottom of the engine up to a wire harness and I noticed there was a little connector unconnected. The color of the wire is the same as the wire going to the float switch. Let's plug it in and see what happens. All right, I've plugged the connector in. I'm going to take my toe and flip that float switch. Aha! wasn't the float switch it was the connector we're good and the thing we're going to clean next is the flame arrestor and while we're in here I'm going to check something called the IAC muffler a little piece of foam that's down in the throttle body
This is the Flame Arrester. It's actually not bad. It's, uh, it's not bad. I'm going to make it a little better, but um, certainly nothing against the previous owner. It appears to be uh, fairly clean. Now, down inside the throttle body is a little foam filter. And sometimes this foam filter can just disappear. And when that happens for, with an MPI engine, you hear a whistling sound like but when you hear that distinct whistling sound, you lost your IEC muffler. So we're looking down the throttle body. This piece right here is the piece of foam. We'll pull that out. Ah, that is fairly dirty. No worries, I've got a couple spares. You can buy these things for about a buck a piece. If you see them for 10 bucks a piece, they're ripping you off. But um, yeah, I'm gonna put a new one in. And you can also take some filter material and cut these and make your own. That's another option. Okay, so here is the flame arrester. Again, it's not bad. I'm going to start by cleaning it with a hose. Then I'm going to put it in some soapy water and hose it off again. Some people say use carb cleaner. The advantage of that is it dries a little bit faster. But I'm just going to use water and soapy water and then a final rinse. My camera's battery is recharging, so sorry about the audio. But I've rinsed this, I've soaked it, um, rinsed it again, and now that it's, it's been cleaned, the metal in the flame arrester looks like metal. The color is no longer just black, it's actually got a metal look to it. I'm just talking about the, the part that's moving here, the actual metal piece. So uh, now that it's rinsed, I'm just going to shake this out. I don't want to put it back wet. And it is pretty rainy out. It's actually drizzling again. So I'm going to put this in the house and let it dry and move on to some other projects. I'm going to change that IAC muffler and I'm going to go take a look at a problem I've got with the windshield wiper. While going through my initial punch list, trying everything out on the boat, the windshield wiper worked. However, I noticed the blade was definitely well past its, its better days. So uh, the mounting mechanism is quite different than what you find on a car. So if you take this blade into your local automotive supply place, they're going to look at you with a confused look. So I started looking online and I found this simple 14 inch wiper blade was for sale at places, $38, another $6 to ship it to me. And I thought, this, this looks like a wiper blade from a Ford L-Series truck. So I went to a local Ford truck dealer where I picked up a Anco 52-15. That's a 15-inch wiper blade for a Ford L-Series truck. And the mounting mount fits perfectly onto the wiper blade same thing that came off so i'm going to put this wiper blade on and rather than buying this thing from an online source for wish shipping over 40 dollars i picked this up at a local trucking supply place they charged me under 12 bucks and like that we saved about 30 dollars it started raining again so I put up two more pieces of canvas, one on each side, just to try to keep the area I'm working on a little bit drier, although it's it's futile, it's coming down pretty good. So uh, just now going over, I've got the flame arrestor cleaned. It's reasonably dry. The next step is uh, gonna be installing this IAC muffler. So looking at this, here's the old and the new. It's just a little piece of foam filter. If you care to make your own, you can make one out of a piece of filter. If you want to buy the official Quicksilver part, it's Quicksilver 35-863829. And um, shouldn't pay more than a buck for this thing. It's, it's just a little piece of foam. Um, I bought it, I think, from boats.com or boats.net, something like that. And I'm just going to put the clean filter right back in this hole. All right, we got a new 
idler air control muffler installed, which is clearly just a little piece of foam. Now I'm going to reinstall the flame arrestor and the holes, if you kind of look through one, kind of help you get it started at least. At least get one of them lined up. If they don't all fit through, you don't have it on the right way. Reinstall the air return. Y bracket. No reason to torque them overly hard. Finger tight is good. Go too hard, it's going to crush the flame arrester. And similar to the last piece, if you just kind of look through the hole, it's easy to line it up. All right. Well, it's September. It's getting darker significantly earlier every day. And I do have a work day tomorrow, so I can't be working that late tonight. But uh, I didn't record some of the projects I did last night. It just got too dark. One project I didn't record was cleaning out the storage compartment in the middle of the boat. Beneath that storage area, it's similar to the belge where the engine compartment is, it was pretty dirty. And it was the same process you've already seen. Spray, gunk, scrub, rinse, and it's clean. However, in that area is something called a water pump. And the water pump has something called a screen filter. And I took that out and it was very dirty. So here's some pictures, some before and after pictures. So you're only seeing half of it. Sorry, I'll have to give you half your money back on this one. But I'm just gonna show you me reinstalling the screen filter. Even if you're connected to shore water, the water still runs through the screen filter before the pump. You might have your pump off, or if it's a boat like this, the only way to get water pressure is to turn your water pump on. This is for the fresh water in the boat, not for the water used to cool the engine. Here is the fresh water tank. The water comes through this blue line, through this device called a screen filter, and then goes through the water pump, out the blue line, and onto the various faucets in the boat. Uh, it's a pretty simple process. We're just going to screw this back onto the pump and then screw the line onto the filter. reinstalled the screen filter on the fresh water system. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel and click on that little bell to be notified of future videos as we bring this boat back to life and go on boating adventures.